We found some awesome Class C RVs with Murphy beds that are under 25 feet long. Stick around, folks. You're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel if you like the video. Give us a thumbs up and we hope to see you in the comments as well. But without any further ado, let's get started with our review of awesome Class C RVs under 25 feet long with Murphy beds. This Class C RV is the Thor Gemini model number 23TE. It measures in at 23 feet 7 inches long, has a tow capacity of 5,000 pounds, and it can sleep up to two people. When you first walk into this Class C RV, the owner's cab is on the right-hand side. Then we swing on around through the living and bedroom area into the kitchen area, and behind me here is a full-width bathroom I know you're going to love. So our first impression of this Class C RV is that they make the most of not a lot of space. I mean, this baby's under 25 feet long, but it feels really nice and bright and airy in here, which makes it feel pretty big inside. Now, up front here in the driver's cab, we're sitting on a Ford Transit chassis. We have a nice big window overhead here to let in a lot of natural light. There's also some open storage all around the front of the over cab. The driver's cab itself is very very compact and yet very comfortable at the same time. Both the driver's seat and the passenger seat swivel around so they face into the rig so you can have some extra seating. So here I am sitting on this nice comfy couch just behind the driver's seat. And this couch is actually in the perfect position to be able to watch TV and you'll see why in just a few minutes. But in addition to this being a couch, it's also your bed. And let me show you how this Murphy bed works. First thing you need to do is just undo these couple of cushions. And then just undo this latch and then pull the bed on down. There is a little, there we go, a little leg that has to come down with it. And then voila, there you go. Your Murphy bed unfolds. Now, I know some of you guys are going to say there's a fold in the mattress in the top third. If this was my bed, every time I pulled it down, I would flip the mattress around so that the fold is on the bottom of the bed instead of under my back or under my hips, which could make for an uncomfortable night's sleep. Now you'll also notice back here, there's a large window over top of the bed. Over top of that, there are these two really nice sized cabinets for additional storage. And there are a couple of lights underneath of the cabinetry as well. I'd also like to point out that on this side of the bed, there is two USB ports with a little cargo net place to maybe pop a phone on in there and charge it overnight while you're sleeping. On the other side of the bed, there's also a charging port as well. So now that we have the Murphy bed put away and we're back into the couch position, there is actually a third function for this area in here. And that is that this also serves as your dinette. Now there is a table that pops into these two table holders at the bottom or in the floor here, but the table is stowed away. We're at an RV show. They don't like to leave those things laying out. Otherwise I would go ahead and set it up for you, you could see it. But anyway, it's just a table that sits here so you can enjoy a meal while you're watching your TV straight across the way. Now, speaking of the TV location, they have a really cool setup where they have a televator built into this cabinet. So this will rise right up. And as I mentioned earlier, it's in perfect position for watching TV while you're lounging on the couch, eating dinner at your dinette or laying in bed. So just above the televator, we have four large cabinet doors with two cabinets behind them for all kinds of storage space in there. One thing that I really like about this model is the shelves are all adjustable. So you can make them whatever height you would need them to be, which in my mind is really, really convenient when it comes to storing things. Down below where the televator is located, there are also a couple of storage cabinets. And at the bottom here, there's a nice pull out drawer that's nice and deep. So as we move past the entertainment area and into the kitchen area, you'll also notice up top here, we have four doors of cabinet space and also the shelves are adjustable here. Underneath, you've got a light and also a bit of a, a, bit of a hood over top of the range, but it's got a light as well. Down below that, we have a nice big round kitchen sink with a gooseneck faucet and sprayer. And then of course, 
we have a Dometic two burner stove that's in here. Now I would prefer personally if they put a different stove in here and the reason why is there's really no countertop space in the kitchen area itself. So if they put a two burner stove in here and they had it front to back instead of side to side, it would give you some more countertop space here in the middle. And for example, you may want to set up your coffee pot here or a toaster. And if you're using your stove, you know, you're really kind of cutting off the area that would allow you to use those kitchen appliances. But there's also a tower of power here. So when you are using those appliances, you do have a place to plug in. Now just below the kitchen sink is where the trash can cabinet is located and then next to that you have three nice sized drawers that fully extend to store all of your kitchen utensils. And then just beyond that we have a convection style microwave oven. Now they don't have a regular gas oven in here but they went with the convection style instead and I'm curious which do you prefer? Let us know in the comments down below whether you prefer like your traditional gas oven or if you're okay with a convection microwave. Down below your convection microwave is a large drawer for stalling, storing all of your pots and pans. All right, now right across from the kitchen sink and cooktop is where the refrigerator is located. And this is a top mounted fridge with a freezer that's underneath. Now it's not the biggest size refrigerator in the world, but for a rig this size, you know, it's nice to have a separate fridge with a separate freezer so you can keep all your ice or keep frozen vegetables or a pizza cold in there. Now, as we keep moving back, we have a mirrored uh, wardrobe cabinet in here. This is a gigantic cabinet and uh, you can certainly hang any garments in here. You can store things below those garments as well. And then there are a couple of drawers down below for additional storage. Now, a couple of other interesting features. One is there is a drawer that goes underneath of the refrigerator, and that's a good sized drawer, so you can store lots of stuff inside of there. And then we have this curiosity right here. I don't know what this is. When I first walked in and looked at it, Susan and I were guessing, maybe you could store like cookie sheets in there. Maybe you would put your cutting board in there. I'm not really sure. Uh, let us know in the comments down below, though, what you would use and what you might store in here. I'm really curious to see what everybody's thoughts are on that. So here we are in the bathroom, which is the entire uh, width of this Class C RV. So it feels really nice in here. Now, I'm standing in the shower like I usually do. And as you guys know, I'm 5'11". But let's see how much headroom we have up into the skylight in here. And it's, I'll tell you right now, it's a good, a bit, good amount of headroom. We have... Uh, six feet nine inches of headroom and throughout the entire rv the ceiling height is six feet eight inches tall so for you taller folks that are looking for a rig you know pretty good amount of headspace in here for you now the shower itself has a nice surround built in here behind me here there are three corner shelves that you can use for your soap and shampoo they do have a shower curtain in here and if you've seen any of our videos by now you know i do not like shower curtains but you could easily buy a retractable shower door and install it yourself. They're a piece of cake to do. Now Susan is standing in the shower and I'm on the other side of the bathroom and I just love the way they've made the most of all of this space. It looks really really terrific back here. We'll start right here with the medicine cabinet which is extra large and plenty of room there to store things. As we work our way across there's another deeper cabinet here. You could put you know TP in there and all kinds of stuff or even your toilet chemicals can go in there. And by the way, we love Matt's Liquified. If you haven't tried it yet, give it a try. It comes in orange and now lavender, lavender flavored or not flavored, <laughs> scented. You know, I was just drinking some and that's why I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Anyway, fantastic product. Uh, down below here, you have your vanity sink with tons of countertop space. Uh, there's also a receptacle at the end here. So if you need to plug in a curling iron or hair dryer, whatever, you have it there. Now there's some open storage on this side under the sink. There's also a cabinet here with additional storage under there. And then there's open storage beside and behind the commode. One other really nice feature in here is that there is a window behind me. And while I'm sitting on the commode, I'm not gonna pass the elbow test in here, but this bathroom feels really nice and large and luxurious. This class CRV is the Coachman Cross Trail model number 20BH. It measures in at 24 feet, one inch long, has a tow capacity of 4,000 pounds, and it can sleep up to four people. The cross trail has a very unique Murphy bed setup with bunk beds instead of your standard Murphy bed. 
When you first walk into this RV on the right hand side is where the driver's cab is located. Then we wrap on around through the living, dining and sleeping area. Finally, we enter into the kitchen area and in the back of this Class C is where some bunk beds and some awesome storage are located. And finally, the bathroom is back here too. Now, our first impression of this Class C RV is like, wow, this is really cool. It's very different. It's not like anything we've seen before. And where the heck in this is the bed? Uh, but we'll show you that as we go through the tour and you'll be very interested to see how all of this lays out. Now in the front, of this class CRV, you'll notice that you've got the Ford emblem on the steering wheel. So this does sit on a Ford Transit chassis. The front uh, seats both pivot around so they can face into the RV. So you have some additional seating there. All of your controls are easily accessible and the dashboard just looks really nice and neat. We really like this feature up top here where your GPS sits. That's in an easy place to see so you can still keep your eyes on the road at the same time. Now up above me here is where your TV is located. So you can be sitting on the couches and easily be able to watch TV. There's also a couple of small storage compartments on either side with some cargo netting there to hold things in place. Now just behind the driver's seat is where this little cabinet is located. You have a nice shelf up here to place things and then below that you have some shelves built in for some storage area there. Now up above here you'll notice that you have very nice cabinetry throughout this entire camper. I love the two-tone look. It also has these little latches on the back of the doors. You just pinch them, pull it right up. Very nice hardware here, so it does hold your doors in place. And then when you put them back down, they just snap right into place. But anyway, you've got plenty of storage here. I think that normally when we see these cabinets, it's all one big cabinet up top, so it makes it a little easier to store things. But these are actually all divided. And so Susan was commenting, it might limit your ability to be able to store things up here. So that's a really great point to consider. Now, down below that, we have a nice big window here. Now we have it closed because there's an RV over there. Gosh, it's like six inches away. <laughs> We're at the RV show and they pack them in tight here. It's amazing how they do it. And then finally, uh, all of your controls are mounted right here for the entire RV. So they're in a nice central location. Now, just a little while ago, I said, well, where the heck is the bed? Well, I, you know, we have these nice comfy couches here that you can sit down and enjoy, but these also serve not only as a bed, but also as your dinette. They have these little end tables here. So four people could sit here with a little plate and enjoy a meal and maybe watch a little TV at the same time. And now I'm gonna show you how this conforms into a bed. So the first thing you need to do is just remove all four of these little end tables. And these are really, really terrific. They have a pin and it just fits right into these little spots where it's got like a little spring loaded cover that pops up so you can't drop crumbs and stuff down there. But anyway, it just fits right in there and they can swivel all around. That's a really neat piece of hardware. But anyway, the way that these convert is they just jackknife. So it's as easy as can be. You just do that on that side and you do this on this side. And this becomes the main bed in the coach. The size of this, it's gonna be pretty big because it is the total width of the Class C. So it's 87 inches wide and uh, about, gosh, I'm gonna call it 49 inches wide. So for some of you taller folks, this would be a really nice bed because it's, I'm sure it's taller than you are, but width wise, I think it's a little tight. I know Susan and I would be fighting for space in a 49 inch bed all night long. And uh, the cover battle will continue, I assure you. Now over top of this side of the couch, You'll notice you have a large window here as well so you can get a nice cross breeze blowing through here and then you have additional storage up above there's also an outlet loaded located on this end of the couch and there's another one on the side of the cabinet over here so whichever end of the bed you sleep on you can plug in and charge any electronics that you need to so here we are in the kitchen area just behind the sofas and this is a decent sized kitchen that's in here it's kind of mid coach and it's in a great spot starting up top you have this really large storage cabinet above and then you have a microwave oven here now instead of propane burners they've gone with an induction cooktop one thing about induction cooktops is you really have to be careful if you use this as extra countertop space first of all you don't want to scratch your glass top and second of all We've done this ourselves. You hit the controls 
by accident, you know, and you might turn it on by mistake. Now, just, just next to the cooktop is where a small kitchen sink is located. It's got this nice gooseneck faucet overhead, but I also like the kitchen window just above the countertop area. That's always a nice feature letting in all that natural light. And they did a little bit of a backsplash. I'll actually call this a side splash because it is on the side of where your, uh, where your burners are. But that's a nice feature as well. The only thing I would do differently on this countertop space is I would have either gone with a, well, I don't think I would have gone a single induction top, but I would have taken this and maybe turned it sideways to give us a little bit more countertop room because there's really not a lot of room like where would you set up your coffee pot and stuff? Maybe you can do that on the other piece of furniture in the front. You could set up a coffee pot and toaster there, or you could set that stuff up on top of your induction burners. Now, underneath of your sink and cooktop, we have a nice big cabinet here under the sink for lots of storage. And then you've got these three really nice sized drawers for all of your kitchen utensils. Now, just across from the kitchen sink is where the refrigerator is located. It's a very skinny fridge, that's for sure. But, you know, there's not a lot of room in a Class C RV that's less than 25 feet long. And so you have to make some sacrifices somewhere. But the fridge, even though it's skinny, it's pretty tall. So there's a decent amount of space in here and it has a separate freezer section up top. So you can keep those ice cubes nice and chilly for your drinks. Now, just beyond the cooktop, there is this really large cabinet built in here. Up top, you have a huge amount of storage. There's no shelf in here. Probably could be, but you can buy stuff like that on your own and organize this however you would like it to be. Down bottom is the same way. It's another really huge storage area. This is also where the ladder stows for the bunks, which are on the other side of the back. Now, this is a really unique setup. We haven't seen this before where you've got these fold up bunks like this, but these can pull right down and into place and you can get two kiddos up here, no problem at all. Now, we look for four features when there are bunk beds. One of them is a window, one of them is a light, another is a receptacle, and the fourth is USB ports. And this bunk has all four of those features available. Now the size of it, let's check that out real quick is 72 inches by gosh just about 28 inches so you know i would say kids would be able to sleep back here pretty comfortable and adults that weigh less than 220 pounds could sleep back here too i guess that means i'm sleeping on the sofa anyway both of these bunks will pull on down and then two kids can sleep here but this is also a great storage uh, space because the bunks fold up and out of the way. And there's actually a door on the back of this Class C, which is pretty big. There's also four D-rings on the floor. So if you're a bicyclist or, I don't know, you want to bring any kind of other toys along that need to be strapped down and held in place, it's such easy access back here to get to this spot. So it's a fantastic way to store things in your RV while you're traveling down the road. One final thing to point out is they really try to use every single square inch they can in here for storage. And you'll notice there's three little cubbies here with cargo mesh netting in front of them to hold extra things in place. So here I am in the bathroom in the very, very back of this Class C RV. And this is a very basic bathroom. It's what's called a wet bath. Now, a wet bath means that your floor in here that you're standing in and also that the toilet is sitting on is all the shower floor. And so when you take a shower in here, you get wet, the toilet gets wet, everything gets wet, and therefore it's called a wet bath. A dry bath would be like your bathroom at home where you have a separate shower and then your tub and your sink and all that stuff are outside of the shower. And so it's called a dry bathroom. But in this wet bath, you know, it's a pretty standard size. Normally wet baths are pretty compact and this one's no exception, but it does have some cool features to it. Now, when you're in here taking a shower, you would pull this curtain shut because you don't want water hitting your door and then leaking out into the RV. And there's a nice little shower head above that's removable. And they even have a cool little sink here in the corner so you can wash your hands in here. Finally, you can sit down on your commode and it's a little bit of a cramped feeling in here, but one of our viewers brought it up in another video where there was a wet bath and I was kind of, you know, ragging on the wet bath a little bit because I'm not a big fan of them. But our viewer said, hey, you know, for people that maybe have a bad knee or a bad hip and they need to sit down when they're taking a shower, 
a wet bath is really a great option because you can sit right here, grab your shower head, be able to use it while you're sitting down. And so there you go. So yikes. Like I always say, different strokes for different folks. We all camp differently and we have to learn from each other from each other's point of view. And I really love that viewer reaching out and letting us know their point of view on wet baths. As far as the elbow test goes in here, there's no way in heck I'm gonna pass that test, but the bathroom certainly serves its purpose very, very well. So here we are outside of this Class C RV, and there is a little bit of storage out here, and it's in this little storage bay, which is not very deep at all. It's only about six inches deep. Now, if you happen to see our video where we toured Phil and Stacy's from Today is Someday, their Class A RV uh, Allegro, they call her Ruby, because it's an Allegro Red. Phil has some storage bays that are very shallow like this in their Class A. What he did was really cool. He took some pegboard and mounted it on the back wall, and then he's able to hang things from the pegboard, like tools and things like that. And it was really just a great way to keep it organized and maximize the storage space in here, because otherwise, I don't know what you would do. You'd, you know, you'd have to stack stuff in here. So uh, that pegboard idea may work for you too. And so if you end up with a storage bay like this, maybe that's a great idea. This Class CRV is the Coachman Prism model number 24MBE. It measures in at 24 feet, 11 inches long, has a tow capacity of 5,000 pounds, and it can sleep up to four people. Okay, when you first walk into this Class C RV on the right-hand side, you have the driver's cab and over cab area. Then we wrap on around into the living and bedroom area into the kitchen. And then finally behind me in the back of this coach is where the bathroom is located. Now our first impression when we walked in here is, wow, this feels really nice. It feels very luxurious. We love the fact that it's got a multi-use sofa, Murphy bed setup. There's also no dinette in here. So it's a really, really fantastic Class C floor plan. Now in the front of this RV, you'll note that it's built on a Mercedes chassis. This is also a diesel engine, so it'll get you around with a little better gas mileage. Also, uh, you can see all the nice Mercedes appointments. These chairs also swivel around so they can face into the back of the coach, so you have some additional seating. Now up top here, everything's packed away because we're at the RV show, but you can flip over this piece of cushion into this opening here and make a bed up top. And if you did that, you would have a bed that is, oh, about 45 inches wide and about 78 inches long. So an adult could sleep up there and maybe even a kid or two could get up there if you're comfortable with them being up here. There's no uh, bed guard or guard rail or any mesh netting or anything up here to keep the little ones from falling out. So probably need to put older kids or you know average sized adults up here to be comfortable. There is also a front window here. They have the shade pulled down right now and this unit is not hooked up to any electricity so there's no AC in here. So they're just trying to keep the sunlight from coming in and making it too hot. But all that natural light coming in here would be a really nice feature as well. So one feature we really think is great inside of this Class C is the Murphy bed setup with the couch in front. This is all in a slide out, so it'll slide on out of here and give you extra floor space inside. Now when you're sitting here on the couch, you may not have noticed yet, but it's right across from the TV location. And the TV in here is built into a televator. And so what happens is you hit your you hit your button and the TV raises on up out of here, which is a really, really cool feature. We can't show it today again because there's no electricity in this coach, but you get the idea. Now the couch itself is very, very comfortable. It does actually recline, but they are electric rec recliners, so we can't use them today. But to turn this into a Murphy bed, that's not electric, and I'll show you how we can do that now. The first thing you need to do is just I think you can fold these pillows down or just flip them out of the way. Then just release the D-ring at the top and pull the bed down. And you have to grab the bracket when you do that. And then make sure that is set up nice and square on the floor. And then you can pull down your Murphy bed. Now, I know a lot of you guys are already saying, oh man, there's a fold in the Murphy bed mattress. I'm not gonna be comfortable with that. Well, if I was sleeping on this bed, I would grab the mattress, just flip it on around, 
and then put the fold at the bottom of the bed and that way the fold is like under your knees not under your back and hips and you'll have a much more comfortable night's sleep that way now over top of this murphy bed you'll note that there are four cabinet doors up there with plenty of storage in them and then there's also a nice big window uh, here as well now some folks are going to say, well, that's a useless window because the only time you can see it is when the Murphy bed is down. But some folks like that because, I don't know, you can see outside, you can open the window and get a nice cross breeze. You know, it's really just up to you how you want to use it. But there are some very good shades in here that will create a nice dark atmosphere for you to be able to go to sleep at night. You'll also note that on each side of the bed, there is a little end table and each side also has USB ports so you can plug in your electronic devices before you go to sleep. I do want to point out one other really nice feature about this Murphy bed and that is when you lift up the mattress, it has all of these wood ribs on here that sort of act like a box spring so you'll get a much more comfortable night's sleep. Now directly across from the Murphy bed, and I do want to mention by the way, if the slide is in, there is still room to walk through back here to get to the bathroom. So that's always a great feature in any RV that has slides in it. But directly across from the Murphy bed and sofa is where your sort of entertainment area is located. I already mentioned that we have a televator up top, but I also want to point out that we have a beautiful fireplace down below so you can get a really nice ambiance inside your RV while you're drifting to sleep at night or just watching TV. Susan and I turn ours on all the time when we're watching TV. It's just a great experience. Now there's also a couple of storage drawers here and then also as we move into the kitchen area there's even more drawers here for all of your kitchen utensils. Now one other really nice feature that they have built in is this little drawer that slides out. And when we first saw that, we were like, wow, that's really kind of weird. It's, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's too far from your sofa. But when this slide for the Murphy bed is in, your sofa would be much closer to this. And then while you're driving down the road, if Susan wants to come back here and do a little work or something like that, you've got this cool little desk set up just for that purpose. Now, as we move back into the kitchen, I mean, I just feel like it's a really luxurious, beautiful setup. I like all the cabinetry with all the dark hardware. It just creates a nice contrast back here. Now, up top, we've got a very large storage cabinet and all the cabinets are held closed with these magnets. And boy, they are really nice and firm. So I don't think you have to worry about cabinet doors popping open while you're driving down the road. Also above the cooktop, is another extra large storage cabinet above here as well. Down below that, we have our cooktop area, and this is an induction cooktop, and I would probably like to see these turned sideways to give you a little bit more countertop space in here, but you also have a nice little spice rack on the wall, and they've got a little side splash built into here as well. Now, as we move back along, you have a nice big single bowl sink in here with your sink covers. And of course, this comes with a very nice faucet with a sprayer. Now below the countertops in here, we have a convection microwave oven. And then next to that, underneath the sink, there's even more storage and plenty of it. Now across from the kitchen sink and cooktop is where your refrigerator is located. This one's a little different than most fridges that we see because the freezer is down on the bottom, but you've got an okay amount of room up top. And then the freezer space, in my opinion, is just a little tight. I don't know if I'd really be able to fit a pizza in there or not, but you could certainly get some ice and some smaller dinners and vegetables and things like that in there, no problem. Now, just next to the refrigerator, you have this really great pantry cabinet. And I love these drawers that slide in and out of here. It makes all of the items that you put in here fully accessible from front to back. And there's three of them, so you have plenty of easy access for that. And in addition, there's another really large drawer down below. I would think this would be used for your larger pots and pan storage. Now here we are all the way in the back of this coach and the bathroom back here is really nice and large and that's because it expands from side to side. Now I'm standing in the shower like I usually do and let's see if we can get, see how much headroom we have in here. I am 5'11", as you guys know, but up into the skylight, there is six feet, eight inches of headroom and the headroom in, throughout the entire RV is pretty good as well. Yeah, it's coming in at six feet, nine inches. So for you taller folks, you know, this probably would work out 
really well for you. Now the shower itself is a corner style shower with the glass doors that wrap around. I really like that. I think it's a great way to make use of the space in your bathroom. Let us know in the comments down below though how you feel about corner showers, especially if you have one in your rig. We'd love to hear from you about whether you think it's a good shower setup or not. For me, it seems like it's plenty spacious in here and I'd be very comfortable taking a shower. Now behind me here, we have an upgraded shower faucet. There are a couple spots for your shampoo bottles and soap and there's even a seat down here in the corner of the shower. Just outside of the shower is where the vanity area is located. This is a really upscale vanity area. This looks like something you'd find in someone's home, not in an RV. Now starting from the top, it's got this really cool lighted mirror instead of a medicine cabinet. And it's got all these different lights that you can choose. We have the same kind of mirror at home and our granddaughter likes to hit it and change all the colors. But there you go, you can pick the color to do your makeup in the morning or whatever you like to do. It also has a feature where if you take a shower in here and the mirror gets fogged up, you can turn that on and it'll defrost, or not defrost, but defog your mirror. Down below that we have this very upscale sink and faucet, it looks really wonderful. And this gives you some extra countertop space around here. There's also a little electrical outlet just below the counter. So you can plug in a hair dryer or curling iron or whatever you need. And then you've got these drawers that pull out for some additional storage. And finally, there's a door here with more storage under the vanity too. Now, beside the vanity, we've got this really large wardrobe closet up above. I mean, that thing is huge, but you can hang all your garments up there and even store more in there. To the right of that is another big cabinet with some shelving built in. So you could use that as a linen, co uh, linen closet or something like that. Down below is a really, really nice feature to have in any RV, especially if you're out on the road a lot like we are. It is a combo washer and dryer. Makes life so much more convenient when you're in your RV not to have to use the laundry facilities at the campground. So finally, I, here I am sitting on the commode in here and you'll notice above me is another cabinet up there that you can be using as your medicine cabinet or store extra items in there. Now sitting on the commode in here, I'm not gonna pass the elbow test, but it doesn't feel cramped in here at all because the bathroom is so large. So here we are outside of this Class C RV, and as you can see, it's got a TV mounted out here, which is great. You can hang out outside with your friends, especially during football season, do some tailgating or watch some football on TV, or you can watch the news or a movie, whatever you're into, but it's just always so nice to have a TV outside. And then finally, they have this really tall storage department on the back corner of this RV. I can't get the door open enough to show it to you because this other RV is parked in the way, but you've got about five to six feet of storage in there height-wise. It's not very deep, um, but if you had taller items like you know fishing poles or things like that, it would be very easy and convenient to store them there. Hey guys, let us know which one of these RVs is your favorite and why down in the comments below. And also let us know your thoughts on sleeping on a Murphy bed. Is it comfortable or not comfortable? Do you even have a Murphy bed so you would know? We'd love to read all your comments down below. But if you'd like to check out even more Class C RVs with Murphy beds under 25 feet long, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.